Hey everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead, and our springiness is continuing. Mm -hmm. We've got so many cool things that are going on. We're dealing with bees, we're dealing with worms. 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 The good kind of worms. Mom's making cheese mm -hmm. and all manner of homesteady springiness. Cheesiness. Let's get busy. And an update. On Clover. On Clover. She's a psycho baby. She's been jumping around, healthy, happy. She's real standoffish, though. Nah, she's, well, she's, yeah. But she's growing like crazy. She's with her mama. It, well, not right now, but part of the day, and then all night long, she's with her mama. Yeah. And she's just doing really well. I'm really happy. And she's, okay, for those of you who want to know why she's not outside... Well, one, Puzzle is not used to her yet. And two, she's too small. She'll go under the fence and take off. And she'll leave. And she'll leave. So yeah. um, I'm not ready to put her outside and lose a calf. No, <laughs> That no. happened last summer, and I don't want to do it again. Well, we didn't lose her, but she no ran fun out chasing. of the fence a lot. Yep. So she's but it, got a big pen in here. She's got plenty of water, plenty sunlight. of air to eat. And, oh, she's she was so just kicking. Geeky. Oh, my Hi goodness. Hi-ya! Yeah, mule. <laughs> well, and here comes Dottie. Dottie's like, what's what's all the hubbub, bub? Anybody got any food? Yep. I know you want food. She's always, that, that cow is so motivated by grub. Oh, yeah, she really is. Yeehaw. <laughs> She's a bucking bronco. Yeah. Not really. No. But all is well. Mm -hmm. Things are going good there. Yep. Um, we'll talk chickens in a little bit, mm -hmm. but right now, let's get to the project at hand. Yep. Bees. Bees. We have to finish. No, we have to seal the beehives. That's right. Yes. Now, we have kept honeybees in the past for five years? Mm -hmm. Five years? Yeah. But since we moved to Wisconsin, it's just been chaotic. We've had to move twice. <laughs> and... And I frankly have been a little bit concerned because I've talked to beekeepers around here that say they have a really hard time overwintering bees. So we had been hesitant because I didn't want to basically just let them die in the winter. And But we've learned a bunch, talked to a bunch of people, and we are now getting ready to get uh, a, two nukes, which that's a whole entire colony with a queen on foundation and all the bees and everything but um i'm super excited because we're gonna we're jumping back in and we have met some friends of ours who actually make this bee equipment and it is the best bee equipment that i have honestly ever seen it's all handmade all cedar everything down to the to the screws are the high quality screws it's not just like glued together all of the joints are super nicely done. It's lightweight because of cedar. And um, I don't know if he wants me to tell the name of their, because he doesn't like to take orders because they get so busy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say it anyway. Honeycomb Acres, because I don't think they have a website. <laughs> but um, we got to seal these up because our nukes of bees are coming. That's the cow. Right into the door. <laughs> What are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. um, but our nukes of bees are gonna be here at the end of the month. So we gotta get these things sealed now. And aired out beforehand. Aired out. Yeah. The thing about beekeepers is they're a lot like farmers. And you talk to a hundred farmers about any topic that's, that they deal with on their farm and they're all gonna have their own idea on how to do it best. There's nothing wrong with that. It's whatever works for you the easiest to get the job done. Beekeepers are the same way. Some say paint them, paint them white, don't paint them at all. Paint don't, them multicolor. Multicolor, some, and they all say something different. And so, that is the sound of a cow. Going potty. Relieving itself <laughs> on camera. Mm -hmm. Well done, Dottie. Oh, behind nice the camera, cue. right. But anyway, um, but we're going to go ahead and take the advice of the guy who made these extremely high quality beehives. And we're just going to seal them up with linseed oil because moisture is not going to be an issue because this is cedar. So here we go. All right. One of the most terrifying sounds a man will ever hear at the doctor.
Boy, this is really making these things look nice, Mama. Yeah. Oops, it's hard to film in and uh, not drop this thing. Oh, yeah, you got the edge Ooh, thank you. Ooh, look at that. This is gonna be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're pretty excited for this year too. Yes, very excited because this is the first year I'm actually all in, hands on deck and not just an observer. Uh, I used to be absolutely terrified of having bees and now I'm just absolutely giddy that we're getting them. So. Yep. And I gotta say, it, you have really taken to this. Like, yeah. I kind of pushed you to get them. No, yeah, there's no pushing <laughs> needed. There was really not a whole lot to get you to go, but I just that say, okay, let's do I'm, it. I'm in, let's do this, let's get this done. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super excited. Holy smokes, look how nice these are turning out. I am so giddy about this. This looks sharp. Look the at those edges. The oil just made it, made these edges pop. Yeah. And so the grain, the wood grain on these just. Look at that. Oh, I love, I love wood like, that's like this. I don't, I, I hate painted wood. Just to see that, God created that. He made that. Yeah. That <laughs> is what, I, I love seeing that. You did a good job. <laughs> you did a good job. Thanks. <laughs> So the calf was getting bored and it kept trying to bite things on the wall. So I decided to give it a bucket to play with. And now it's really irritated with the bucket. <laughs> get out of here, now bucket. Mad. Now she's mad, look at it. Get it, get it, get the thing. I've never seen a calf play, it's like this. So it's irritated. It doesn't want that bucket oh, in there. Look. Oh, what's in there? Oh, this is sweet. That's for the sweet feet. Yeah. <laughs> and look what else Mama is making here. <laughs> what you got? This, this is a bizarre a, scene, Mom. Well, it's straining off the way. What is it? I'm making a soft cheese. They don't know. I'm making a soft cheese. And this is exactly how I do yogurt as well. So it's a super easy way to... Well, they call it a farmer's them. cheese. Yes. Well, farmer's cheese is you can make it with um, vinegar um, and then strain it like this. But I use a mesophilic culture and rennet, and it turns out really, really yummy. So the basic, basic thing is you take your milk, mm -hmm. you heat it up to a certain temperature. Heat it up to 80 degrees. Um, and I do that in a... A I, big old I, pot. I do it in a big old pot, but I do it... Okay. Cool. Go for it. <laughs> so, what I do is I get the pot with water in it and I put my utensils in there, I get it boiling. I sterilize those utensils and the pot. Then I take that boiling water and I stop up the sink and pour that boiling water in it. Then I put my cold milk in the pot and I heat the milk that way so it doesn't overheat it. Um, and it heats it pretty quickly because you've got that, wa that hot water bath around it. Right. Um, so I heat it to 80 degrees. I add the culture or the mesophilic culture. Then I add uh, rennet and then I let it sit for 12 hours. And then you and do then this. And then I strain it. And now it's ready to be mixed with some salt. And I'm going to try and put it in the cheese press for a little while just to press out a little bit more whey and see how it goes. No way. No way, ha ha. Step two. The cheese press. Yes, I put a cloth in here like this. It's so not necessarily it's a cheese cloth. It's not necessarily, cloth. it's not a cheese cloth. It's actually considered a flour sack, but I don't put flour in it. It's just the way they come at Walmart. Um, I line this and then I put the cheese in there. We built this, it's uh, not a professional one. This is one. not a professional. This, this however, is. is um, but this is just a... And here's a design flaw for those of you who guys want to make make a cheese press. This is too long. I had this threaded rod, so that's why we cut it like that. But it's too long, because every time you want to put the, the wing nuts on, you got to spin them the whole way down. Yeah, and then when you make a mistake, you have to take it all the way off and then put it back all the way up, which is what I did. <laughs> but it's working. It's working. We're making cheese. Tighten it down just a little bit more, and you can see it's really pressing the way out of there. Once again, no way. Okay, now in a previous video, you saw that Brad is no electrician. However, I can read schematics, 
Except the problem was there were so many conflicting schematics, I read the wrong ones. But I can be taught, and I finally got it right. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yay! I know, you know what's funny? Is it must seem like, to a lot of you guys out there, it must seem like, boy, they get excited about the littlest, stupidest things. I've never had to do this before in my life. And that to me is like really, really cool. Especially since that's, how tall is that? That's 10 feet 10 up. 10 feet, yeah. I don't like heights. I got up there the whole time. So, yeah, I'll take the small victory. Okay, it's time. We got worms. We got worms. Yes, we do. We got worms. How about you? <laughs> We've got more, right? Right, Isn't right. Isn't that how the chant goes? I don't know. Okay, in the past, we have done vermicomposting, worms. And you use them for fertilizer, and we make worm tea, mm -hmm. which is not made out of worms. And but, you don't uh, drink it. No. It's yucky. It's for your garden, but it is like the <laughs> How most How would I amazing... know it's yucky? How would I know it's yucky? I don't, I don't know that it's yucky. I've never had it. It's gross. Bizarre. <laughs> Could run it in that little seltzer making machine we have that puts co2 oh in goodness it. like a worm poo soft drink <laughs> anyway in the past we've made our own bins and they work great but we're going to start out small and we actually want to keep this kit inside to feed it easier because of also temperature changes right um our temperature change is very drastic here uh it can range from negative 35 to 95 Whatever. depending on the day but uh, you'll kill your worms if it's too cold and you'll right. kill them if it's too hot so we're going to keep them actually in our downstairs kitchen uh so we can pay more attention to them and they have a regular schedule um, schedule and regular temperature yeah and not temperature swings and i know that people out there who have not seen any of this stuff are going you're going to keep them in your house the way that these are set up it doesn't stink right. they're odorless and you can well we'll show you the whole process the whole process won't happen in just this video but we're going to show you the setup mm -hmm. uh and we're going to actually even follow the instructions oh snap Brad and his manuals. I love manuals. He loves manuals. I will actually download. See, I'm getting all backed up because I get excited about manuals. He'll download a manual of something he doesn't even own and to, read it. To figure out if I want it. Mm -hmm. It's smart. It's weird. It's smart. So That's the, bizarre. <laughs> it says to start out with your coconut core brick. When you you got the water. It. Yes, I do. It's right here. It says you put the coconut core brick in the block bucket mm -hmm. with four or five cups of water. Okay. Do you want to grab the bucket? The bucket's over there. Oh, you put it over here? No, I didn't. You did. That's the bucket. Oh. Thought you had the water. I do. It's over here. But coconut core. This is going to be the media that they're going to live in at first. So I imagine it's like one of those toys where you stick the water in and it goes, but oh, we'll see. Wait till you see. Our material is almost ready. We might need a little bit more water. But go ahead and describe the whole setup here, Mom. Okay, so this is the ba the bottom. This is the base, and we've got our feet here. We also have a spigot for any of the juices that come off yes. um, that are actually really <laughs> beneficial to your plants in your garden. Um, this is called a worm saver, and this goes down in here like this. And then we put in... Our, our first top, tray, yeah. Our, our top, our first tray, yeah. Then we will line, it's got holes in it, as you can see, for airflow. And for the liquid to go down. And for the liquid to go down. So we'll take a few sheets of newspaper and line the bottom here. Because we don't want the worms going into the nope, liquid. This will be part of their food as well. They will eat newspaper. Or any kind of paper you have. This is just what we have. We don't have a paper shredder. Well, and the so, cool thing is, is that these things stack. And what happens is when the worms are done eating with what they have here, they'll go up, up. into the next tray exactly. up. So exactly. then you'll have, you'll be left with a bunch right. of delightful fertilizer. For and, and worm casting. So when all of the worms go up, then you can take this tray out and use all of these worm castings for your garden. garden. And then you just... Take a, uh, put another one on and just keep going. Just they just keep, keep going. going. Yep. 
Now you can't, the one thing that you've got to remember is don't overfeed your worms. I was reading in the book and it said one pound of worms, of red wiggler worms will eat a half a pound of food a day. Yeah. That's not a lot, but that seems like a lot for a pound of worms. That's just a lot of worms. But where's that? They gave you a cool chart too. Yep. This is kind of neat of yep. what you're supposed to feed them and what you're not. Right. And this is interesting here. Avoid meat, eggs, fish, dairy product, bones, and pate wet, pate. Pet waste. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to put pet yeah. waste in there. Let's get so, that. yeah, pretty cool stuff. Let me go to worms. Hello, worms. Come here, worms. There they are. We gave See? them some some cabbage, I believe. Mm -hmm. They're in there. Look at them. It's so weird watching the soil move. Look at yeah. that. They're running away from the light. Yeah, they don't like the light. They do not like the light. Let's okay, smooth that out a little bit. I was going to. Just be careful. Look at that. They're going to make some killer Release. fertilizer. All right, next we're going to get this newspaper a little bit wet. Um, we don't have a spray bottle, so I'm going to dip it in here. Just to get it a little damp. See, just like so. Just like that. Put this it down. Just to keep them moist. Happy, happy. Happy, happy. Then we'll put this vent tray on here for a few days. Um, and then we'll put this... The top on goes top later. Event. Yeah, this goes on later. Yep. And that That's is it. exactly it. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. All right, people. So I have a weird <laughs> confession to make. <laughs> yes, it's a conf yeah. confession time with Brad. It's a weird confession. No, I, all I can think is confession time with Brad. Confession time. Uh, <laughs> are you ready to purge? And then you have the, the cheesy music and... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird because you have genuine concern for your worms. Right. Like, I don't want to, I want to make sure I get it just right because I don't want to hurt the worms. Right. And they're just worms. They're just worms. You know, here's another funny thing is when we told some of our friends, our neighbors, that we were going to start to do the vermicomposting. Yeah. And they're like, oh. Those are the best fishing worms. Don't touch my worms. Well, Christo's like, you're not getting Don't, any of our no, worms. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> it is a fun yeah. and funny thing that happens. But anyway. good for the garden. Yep. I'm pooped. and um, They're going to make some. Yes, these guys. And um, we got to go try out your cheese. Yeah. So I think that's it for the video, guys. Uh, I'm Brad. I'm Krista. You guys have an amazing and blessed day.